The following is a special presentation of ABC Sports. ABC Sports presents live in its 30th anniversary season, the Professional Bowlers Tour, today from Canandaigua, New York. It's the United States Open. In our first match, you'll see Bob Learn Jr. of Erie. He goes against Mark Thayer of Lafayette, Indiana. The winner of that match will face Robert Lawrence of Austin, Texas. In our semifinal game, you'll see two-time player of the year, Amleto Monicelli. The tournament leader is Scott Devers of Richmond, Indiana. And that's our outstanding field of finals for today's Professional Bowlers Tour telecast. The best bowlers in America have come to upstate New York to the Finger Lakes region for the bowling proprietor's most prized event, the $225,000 United States Open. Canandaigua Lake, one of America's most prized spots. The willow trees here at Cook's Point are about to bloom. This is just one of the Finger Lakes called Canandaigua by the pre-Iroquoian Indians. Canandaigua means the chosen spot. Hello again, I'm Chris Shankle, and this is indeed a chosen spot. Canandaigua Lake, 18 miles in length. It's good fishing, friends, so that helps make it a marvelous tourist attraction. The town itself is called Canandaigua. Main Street is lined by old, restored, wonderful Victorian homes, and some of the great shopping areas for antiques are there as well. It's calm, it's peaceful, it's quiet. This week, however, at Roseland Bowl, the action has been fast and furious. The finals are about to get underway, so let's go to the Roseland Bowl now, my colleague Nelson Burton, Jr. Thank you, Chris Schenkel. Upstate New York for the 14th stop on the 1992 PBA Tour. A sellout crowd here this week, and they're on hand to crown a new champion in the second Triple Crown event of the year, the U.S. Open. The Firestone Tournament of Champions is only two weeks away. Now, the format of this major tournament is a little bit different than a regular tournament. It's seven days long. The players started last Sunday. They bowled 56 games to get just to the top five. In this field, we had 144 of the elite pros, combined with 96 league bowlers and two players from Japan. Now, normally, the winner of this, P this PBA event and a major title takes home this wonderful trophy. However, last year, it was a little bit different scene at the presentation. Pete Weber, the 1991 champion. And he thinks that bird can fly. <laughs> and this is the trophy that awaits this year's 92 U.S. Open champion. Now let's take a look at how the players are attacking the championship pair. The PBA lane maintenance crew has applied oil 37 feet down the lane. The back 23 feet are dry. Now there's a little bit of carry down on the left side with the one bowler, our tournament leader Scott Devers, coming just outside the second arrow. And on the other side of the lane, we have four right-handers who have carried some oil down in this area. Now Devers will try to stay to the extreme outside. He's our tournament leader. Our four right-handers are playing different types of shots, some big hook balls by some of the players between the second and third arrows, out to the edge, into the 1-3 pocket. Chris Schenkel, a major tournament, a lot of cash available. Yes, we have a total of $225,000. $40,000 of the winner, 22 runner-up, 12, 8, and 6,500. Second last year in the United States Open in Indianapolis, Mark Thayer in red. Lafayette, Indiana going against Bob Learn Jr. A victor for the first time this year, winning in Baltimore. He hails from Erie, Pennsylvania. Match one about to get underway, head to head. Come on. Whipping it off that hand. Powerful strike by Bob Learn Jr., who is number two in the averages this year at 217 behind Dave Ferraro, 218. Okay, here is Mark Thayer. One of the largest crowds ever, though, in a bowling establishment for a professional bowler store telecast. You bet, Chris, and the weather has warmed up a little bit, and you can see the perspiration starting to flow on the players' foreheads. So we're all even. Mark Thayer, who was 14 and 10 in match play as we replay his last shot. 
Mark Thayer with a very powerful delivery. He has the contemporary move where his wrist is up, cocked. He's in a good, solid position. He's ready to pivot through. Now watch this wrist action as he snaps through the ball. He and Robert Lawrence, who will be in the next match, have that coast-to-coast -coast shot. They start from the left channel, out to the right edge, back to the 1-3. I hit leaving the four pin. As Bo mentioned, uh, Mark needs to win to qualify. Another man in the field of five. Robert Lawrence of Austin needs to requalify. Bob Learn is in by his victory at Fair Lanes in Baltimore. This crowd is incredible in size. Way off at, well, the middle of your screen, beyond. People are standing. I don't think they can see a thing. Maybe they're watching a monitor, Bo. Uh, we hope they're getting some enjoyment, but they wanted to be here, and the proprietor, Jack Moran, who's done such a great job, wants them here. I agree, Chris. They've been standing in line all week long, and obviously today in the 60-lane center. Not room for everybody, but I'm sure they'll be watching monitors. Now, Bob Warren, who has been excellent this year, up in the second frame, going for a double. He has it. Today is his 30th birthday. Look at Bob Warren, how he sets up in this area. He pushes the ball away. Look at the left hand off of the ball in the first step, stepping off the ground. Now he's got a lot of momentum. The good, solid arm swing. Now he's in line with his target. See where this arm swing is going to come right back through. He's going to swing that ball wide. All our right-handed players today are power players. Now learn in third frame, he's perfect through two. And a 10 pen now stands for the happy birthday boy who was 10 and 14 in match play. Fifth television appearance ever. Second pin on the right hand part of your screen, the six pin. It doesn't quite get up to knock out the 10. Lauren has an easy spare across lane to continue his lead. Get this, Bob Lern holds the American Bowling Congress record for sanctioned perfect games. 43. Chris, we tried to figure it out the other day. I called him the Babe Ruth of bowling. He figures out of every 63 games he rolls, he rolls a perfect game. That's quite a percentage. Now, here's Thayer, third frame. All right. Mark Thayer has always bowled well in the majors, and he has an explanation why. Let's listen. Well, I tend to get up a little more mentally for the big tournaments. And also, I believe in a national format, you have 14 more games of qualifying before they cut to the top 24. So that helps you tremendously, getting reads on lanes and uh, changing it up when you need to. And Mark needed that double to stay close. Canadagua, New York. The big lake here as a view of Canadagua City Pier area. I remember it well. I'd just come out of some of the most rugged country of Utah when I turned 200,000 miles on my truck. I was way back in the woods, as rugged as at the base of Chestnut Mountain. A lot of people won't go there, but it's a special place to me. And I pulled over the side of the road, showed a sign saying 200,000 miles. Is that cool or what? Where were you when your Toyota truck hit 100, 200, or 300,000 miles? Call us and tell us your story. The only truck I'll ever own be a Toyota. I'll tell you that much right now. Morning belongs to Skin Bracer Aftershave. Its cool, brisk tingle really gets you going. And what a great scent. Skin Bracer. No better way to face the day by day. Growing things and making your place look great is supposed to be fun. Your helpful hardware folks at Ace are almost right next door. Always ready to help with great values on just what you need. So do it once and do it right. Another reason Ace is a place for you. Now here early in our first match of the United States Open Championship in Canandaigua, New York. This man trails by one. He has a spare up shooting in the fourth frame, bowling against Mark Thayer. Ooh. Nelson 
Partner, we have seen some shots like this where we get the 3 4 combination split. It happened twice last week in Sayville, a 3 4 combination. Bob Learn is quickly up with another ball to try to slide across lane. He needs to slide the 3 into the 4 and hope to get a kick on the 7. Tough shot. So it's, it's a tough open frame. Bob Learn averaged 230 plus the first three days of the tournament in the 24 match play finals he dropped to a 200 average. What made the difference? Well I was going real well the first uh, 32 games of qualifying and, and of course I was leading but uh, I didn't bowl nearly as well. I struggled a lot in the finals. Uh, didn't win that many matches and uh, I'm just feel real fortunate being here today. That's what the pros do. Make an error, they come bouncing back. But you can never make up for an error in bowling where you can in a lot of other sports. <laughs> Mike's there of Lafayette, Indiana now. Is strung three and he takes a 27 pin lead. This is the first match. The winner to meet Robert Lawrence of Austin, Texas, then Amleto Monicelli, twice player of the year. The coast to coast shot of Mark Thayer out to about the second board, 42 boards, 42 inch wide lane, 39 boards. He uses most all of them. Can extend to 37 pins. And that he does. Kathy flew in from Lafayette along with uh, Mark's brother, Skip. He's got a Thayer booster button on, and uh, she says, I think I'll have those printed up for everybody. And I says, well, as soon as he gets a wind under his belt, it'd be a great idea. Nice couple. Now mm -hmm. another nice guy, Bob, Robert Lauren, right. struggling. Come on, hit. Robert Lauren, Erie's pride and joy, the flag, Ship City, open. Both these players made note of the national format as said by Larry Thayer or the 32 games that qualifying by Learn and that's because the 56 game tournament. Now let's see how Learn's playing the championship here. Standing here, he'll drift left. You're going to look for a shot right in this area with a wide swing out to the edge. Here it goes. He needs this for turkey. Oh, come on. That cuts Mark Thayer's lead to 17 pins and a big smile, Robert Learn. You know, the spring runoff has come to the Canadagua area, and I think it's a thing of beauty. Look at that. Oh, give me the waiters and a fly rod lookout. It's one of the most technologically advanced, most rigorously tested fluids on Earth, relentlessly measured for maximum protection against the friction, the wear and tear, the heat and stress of today's engines. It is today's Quaker State. In Europe, in Japan, in America, Quaker State quality has passed the most demanding tests automakers can throw at it. At Quaker State, we don't just say we're tough, we're tested tough. The big Q is one tough motor oil. Shine a light on you, shine a light on me. Keep your front light shining for everyone to see. A cut's clean through your thirst, never leaves you flat. Out shining all the others at from Bud Light. Yeah. If you're into looking good, get into Bud Light. Clean, fresh taste won't fill you up, never let you down. And you can taste it, you can feel it, you know you got it right. Everything else is just a light. Keep your Bud Light shining. Everything else is just a light. Football, baseball, and Olympic stars compete as the Jeep Superstars continues. Plus the Bluegrass Stakes presented by Kawasaki. All next on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Roseland Bowl is the competitive area for this year's United States Open. Sponsored by the Bowling Proprietors Association of America. A four-bagger going for five, shooting the seventh frame the leader. Back to leading by 27 pins as we join Bo on the approaches. Thank you, Chris. Robert Lawrence, the last time you made the championship round Sacramento, you struggled. Uh, today, a major, uh, what do you think is going to happen out there for you? Well, I'm going to try to stay focused. Uh, last time, I might have got a little overconfident, a little cocky even. Not this time. I'm going to try to stay focused on every shot, and it's there's some guys on there that can throw some strikes, so I'm going to have to throw more strikes. I think that's what he's going to need today, Chris. Ideal lane conditions, we'll know in a minute. All right. Six in a row for Mark Thayer. My, the scoring's 
good here in our first match. He leads now by 37 pins. However, Bob Learn Jr. has a turkey, and now he's shooting in the eighth frame. Needs it right here. Hit it one time. Yes. Okay. Next, next Saturday, ABC Pro Bowlers Tour winds down and the pressure is really on. It's the last chance for qualifying for the Firestone as the big strikers are looking for relief in the Tums Classic. That's next Saturday on ABC Sports. And you saw a picture of Stacy and Brandon Learn. Brandon, 10 years old. And he has a little sister, Brittany, three years old, not here. Oh, hit. Great competition, Nelson. You're right, Chris, and that was a key shot. Right now, he's, he has a chance for a 253 game, Bob Warren Jr. They are right now going at a 249, 250 pace, so this match is up for grabs and one of the highest scoring matches of the season. Now with a seven bagger, Mark Thayer, Lafayette, Indiana, looking for that first professional victory, second in last year's United States Open. Thayer with that big, powerful hook ball has a chance to shut out his opponent, and he takes a tremendously big angle on the lane. He stands on the left side, he's gonna walk in this area, and his ball is gonna swing way out here between the third and fourth arrows. This is to lock out his opponent. And here in Pennsylvania is Bob Learn Jr. bowling tremendously, but this guy is hot. Can he sustain it now over a four-game haul, Bo? This is uh, one of the majors. They are a possible 280 game. This far this year, Mark has earned 22,000. Bob Learn Jr. with a victory is over 40,000. Eric Porco leads in the money earned with 98,000 thus far this year. There is Kathy. She says that Mark just needs to win a game to get loose. He's going to be around 280. Ironically, he lost to a 289 game in Indianapolis last week, last year to Pete Weber. Well, Mark can only shoot 184 in that match. Well, the victory went to Weber and the Eagle went to the deck. 279 there. For Bob Warren Jr., a couple of cosmetic strikes here to finish out. He'd be a 253, a tremendous opening game. The players be averaging right at 265. Fabulous start. 14th stop on the PBA Tour, the second jewel of Boeing's Cripple Crown, the U.S. Open. That's our 19th strike of this match. Wow, what's happening, Bo? Well, ideal lane conditions, Chris. Uh, the PBA lane maintenance crew tried a little something different. They, I showed the carry down of the oil, which we've talked about all year long. They wiped the lanes down the last 15 feet be right before we went on the air, and it has made the difference. And Bob Warren can shoot 253 in a losing effort. That's what he shot in a winning effort just a few weeks ago. Well, let's make sure they carry that mop wherever they go. <laughs> Each bowler, great with 10 strikes, the victory. 279, 253, ABC Sports presentation of the Professional Bowlers Tour. We return after this message and a word from our ABC station. Thoroughbred Racing's greatest event, May 2nd on ABC Sports. Everybody hates to eat and run. We'd rather take it slow. But the way this life is going, Gotta grab your food and go And with all that running round Catches up with you at last Get yourself some Alka-Seltzer And you'll feel better fast For acid indigestion Or heartburn with headache Nothing's faster or more effective than Alka-Seltzer Get yourself some Alka-Seltzer And you'll feel better fast 
It's a tractor value like no other. For only $9.99.99, get this Craftsman 2 12 and a half horsepower tractor with 38 inch deck. Save $250 during Sears days. It's a spectacular value above the rest. Dear I'm Thompsons, sorry, when the store ran out of Thompsons water need, steel, we finished our deck with another brand. So what a mistake. The Thompson side beat it up, the other really side bad. nothing. Even the clerk agreed, nothing works like Thompsons. Sincerely, Becky Jones, Charlotte, North Carolina. Sunday at a special time. Let my people go. The most spectacular film of all is a television classic. Charlton Heston is Moses, The Ten Commandments. You can score big at WSBA's third annual Team Classic with a guaranteed first prize of four, count them, four 92 Pontiacs. To qualify, just bring your four-person team to York any weekend between April 4th and August 23rd. The top 30 teams return Labor Day weekend for another six-game shootout, and each member of that winning team takes home a brand new Le Mans. This WSBA tournament is open to men and women with bowling league averages. For more information, phone 848-1632. You never know what kind of copier dealer you got until you have a problem. But when you call a Minolta dealer... Hello, Harrisburg Copiers. Bob Lewis speaking. May I help you? You'll always have a dealer who makes service and response a number one priority. So if you buy a Minolta copier from us, we'll leave no problem unsolved and no question unanswered. CNC Music Factory Zelma Davis speaks out about the attacks on her singing. The Pro Bowlers Tour. Brought to you by Toyota. Reminding you to always buckle up. Do it for those who love you. And by Alka-Seltzer. For the way you live today, you'll feel better fast with Alka-Seltzer. Pleasantly, we've had the biggest scoring first game of our telecast this year. Fair defeating Learn 279 to 253, each with 10 strikes. That's it. Now, Robert Lawrence of Austin, Texas, comes in to test the Hoosier here in Canadaigua, New York. Yesterday, Dick Weber was given a special award by the Bowling Proprietors Association of America's Wally Hall, the men's all-time all-star honoree. He, like Don Carter, have won four championships, 62, 63, 65, and 66. Hall of Famer, great guy. You're right, Chris. As we start this second match, Lawrence watching that big score, and just to kind of clarify the award to Dick Weber, the All-Star Tournament was the forerunner of this, what we call the U.S. Open. This was name changed just in name in 1971, so it's all the same tournament. Now, Thayer, who has 10 strikes in a row. moment 11 first in his second game with 10 in the first game now he sends it wide watch the head pin do the job the scout or messenger as they call it now Robert Lawrence with the same type of shot as theirs using coast to coast beautifully done who was second earlier this year, losing to his roommate, Mike Scroggins, 242 to 202. And he needs to win to re-qualify. He has two PBA titles, three regionals. He hasn't won a major before, and once again, you're gonna see Robert Lawrence almost in the same position as Thayer, not quite hooking it as much. He's standing here, he'll slide here, he'll be around the third arrow. Watch this position, then the big swing out, hopefully to the edge. Trying for a double. And Robert Lawrence gets it. Youngest of seven children. Coming up next on ABC's Wide World of Sports, world record long jumper Mike Powell is part of a lead field challenging for the right to go to the finals of the Jeep Superstars. Then, Derby Hopefuls will be in Kentucky for the Bluegrass Stakes, presented by Kawasaki. All next on ABC Sports. Ten pin on the right lane. They're sending it wide, saws the six out, but it doesn't quite take out the ten. And here's the action and curve that he gets. He'll start the ball around the third arrow, he'll swing all the way out to the edge, and he'll just leave the half ten, as we call it. Boom.
Bad break. Second frame, Mark Thayer. Chris, he just hooks by it, and once again, we see a different effect of cleaning off the back ends. I said the PBA lane maintenance crew about 15 minutes before airtime cleaned off the carry down, which we feel has been the problem with the low scores this year. But now the ball will hook more at spares, so the players have to make adjustment on spares. And now for Mark Thayer, who had 11 strikes in a row. The end of the first victory over Bob Learn, and then the first frame of this game, our second is Kathy, rather grimly watches a medical secretary in Lafayette, Indiana. Pretty, huh? Okay. That's bowling. 22 pin lead held by Robert Lawrence with a double up shooting in the third frame. <laughs> Zeroed in is 29 year old Robert Lawrence who had a 16 and eight match play record. Lawrence with a five-step delivery, very similar to Thayer's. Look at his eyes concentrating on his target. His eyes have not moved. And here's the key, the wrist action up at the top, almost perpendicular to the approach. Look at how he opens up this foot, drives through. And this, and look at him grimace as he lets it go, the hand rotating and wrist completely around the ball. He's perfect through three frames, 32-pin lead. Robert Lawrence had a four-bagger. Actually, his opponent had nine in a row and then one in the first match as he's going against there. And look at that lead. Let's go down memory lane 30 years ago with the Shirelles. I promised my wife I'd sell it when we bought the new one. But every time I look at Dad's old Corolla, I remember the first time he brought it home. Well, what do you think? He was so proud. He said, these, these cars, cars are, are built, built to last. And he was right. The Toyota Corolla. Over 15 million happy memories and still counting. Sell Dad's Corolla? Sure. For about a million bucks. Morning belongs to Skin Bracer Aftershave. Its cool, brisk tingle really gets you going. And what a great scent. Skin Bracer. No better way to face the day by day. Right now, save 25% on Goodyear Eagle ST and Goodyear Invicta GL. That's right, 25% on two of our best-selling all-season radials. It's another reason we say the best tires in the world and in your neighborhood have Goodyear written all over them. The headaches. The heartaches, the frustration, the only remedy, the Tums Classic, next Saturday on ABC's Pro Bowlers Tour. The number four seed, Mark Thayer, is up now here in Canada, with New York, side of the United States Open. He won the first match down by 42 now. Spare working, and now he's left the 2-4-5. He had 10 strikes in his victory over Bob Learn, 279 to 253. Learn with 10 strikes as well. But he's run into trouble now, spare shooting here. Missing a 10 pen on the right line. Let's see what he does with the 245. Okay, let's go down to Nelson Burton. Thank you, Chris Schenkel. Amleto Monicelli in the semifinal match. Uh, Amleto, are you surprised at the scoring out here on the championship here today? And if not, why do you think they're so high scoring? Well, uh, I'm not surprised because uh, it's a good field and uh, it's the U.S. Open. I guess they're trying harder, concentrating good, and making the best shot they can. Early in the week, the scores were great on Monday and Tuesday. Is this a Monday shot? I don't know. They might think it is. I don't know. <laughs> All right, back to you, Chris. And Mark Thayer here in the second game continues to struggle. On the left line, he has left 3-6-10. Remember, he was second last year in the United States Open at Indianapolis. Our scorekeeper today won the 19...
87 U.S. Open, Del Ballard, victor last week, and Bo Burton won the U.S. Open in 1978. So it's a spare. That isn't good enough against Robert Lawrence of Austin. Second earlier this year at the ARC Sacramento, losing to his roommate, Mike Scroggins. Won 50 grand in a national scratch championship in San Antonio a couple of years ago. There's five in a row. Robert Lawrence told Bo at the beginning of this tournament that he refused to get beaten up again this week. Well, I've made more match play finals than anyone else on tour this year, and I've kind of been the whipping boy of the tour. I'm only winning 30% of my matches, and uh, mentally I'm letting myself down at the start of each match. If I get behind, I was kind of, I'd lose my thoughts, and this week I concentrated in every match. If I was down, I just tried to bowl the best game I could, whether I was winning or losing, and at the end of the match, most of them turned out to where I was winning. Robert and Dave Ferraro each with seven match play performances here in 1992, Bo, and look at those strikes. You're right, Chris, and this is what Lawrence did so well a couple years ago when he was hot. He was tripping the four pin. Nobody can deny his power on the light hits, but when he can trip that four out of there, he's really, really, really tough to beat. And Mark Thayer, who is trailing by 68 pins, just takes a, a beat here. Let's slow the action down a little bit. Let's see if he can recoup. He needs some strikes. Great concentration and ability as his opponent has six in a row halfway to the $100,000 true value award should he get six more. We're talking, of course, about Thayer's opponent, Robert Lawrence of Austin, Texas. Two schools of thought about keeping a string alive is one, you're freewheeling because you've won the match. Or number two, you need to beat your opponent. Right now, if Thayer doesn't strike, this match is almost in Lawrence's hands. Then he can shoot for the big 300. Seven pin wobbles still stand. Well, Thayer 279 with nine strikes in a row the first game. Right now, looks like he'll finish fourth in the U.S. Open. He was second last year. The best, even if he converts this, is 212. Robert Lawrence has one thing to think about right now. Maintain his concentration. Go for the 300. Mark Thayer continues to be playing, looking for that first victory. Last year he won 72,000 without a win. This year he's up to 22. And he'll pick up a good check today. thousand today. Now we have seven in a row, five to go. Well, for Lawrence, as well as he's throwing the ball, and last night he looked the best of all five top five finalists finalist in the last eight games. So he's carried that forward today, and the key for him is just don't pull the ball. I think he can send it just about as wide as he wants. There's no pull area, and his carry's been perfect so far. Two pen. There were four 300 this week. Rusty Cox, Scott Alexander, Jim Johnson, and Del Ballard Jr. See, I said he couldn't throw it too wide. So he just, he did the two pin. Easy spare, he's got the game well in hand. Okay, we're at the United States Open in upstate New York, Canadagua. Leto Monticelli will be stepping in, twice player of the year. Did you know, look at it, we'll be back.
My house club always had Pert Plus in the locker room. It cleans, conditions. It's great. And one day they switched. This one said it had conditioner in it. Thought my hair told a different story. Some two-in-ones don't lather as well or leave hair feeling as clean. Others don't fully condition. But Pert Plus's microbead conditioner leaves hair clean and completely conditioned. Now when I go to my club, my Pert Plus goes with me. Pert Plus. There's no two-in-one like this one. Football, baseball, and Olympic stars compete as the Jeep Superstars continues. Plus the Blue Grass Stakes presented by Kawasaki. All next on ABC's Wide World of Sports. <laughs> There's our tournament leader from Richmond, Indiana, Scott Devers, the only left-hander in the field. So he has to wait for two more games and the completion of this, the second game, one more game after this. And uh, then he'll get to go to work. He's continuing to stay loose off to our right. Meanwhile, Mark Thayer, big win in the first, having trouble here in the second. Bad, he says. Well, he's just having fun now. Uh, he, he bowled great in that first match with the 279-253 victory over Bob Warren Jr. This game he's going to be under 200, but he looks real good in a championship round. He got a win under his belt, and that's important for Mark Fitton. These two players learned to bowl on tremendously different lane conditions. Mark Thayer's highest league average was only 207. He said he learned to bowl in a very tough lane condition, very tough lane services, where Robert Lawrence's opponent averaged near 240 in league. So there's a school of thought that toughness makes you tough and easiness makes you easy, but that's not necessarily true. Chris, I think it may reflect in that a fellow like Thayer is not used to bowling back-to-back -back big games because he learned to bowl in a tough condition. Look at the grip mm -hmm. of Robert Lawrence. He uses a fingertip grip, full finger, and he has a 5 8 inch reverse. That thumb hole means that it's going 5 aces away from the center of the ball. Easy to get out of the thumb. Robert says that he started bowling at a year and a half. First league when he was four. Shot his first 300 game when he was 15. Well, his dad was a bowling proprietor, his late father. Owned a lane built by the great NFL Hall of Fame quarterback, Bobby Lane. Possible 279. That's the winning score Thayer had in the first match. Once again, that three... Four, six, seven, split. The big hook ball players can leave that. You wouldn't see that from a normal type player who throws a minimum amount of hook. Even though he doesn't need to make it, he can get over here and in the three, six zone, drive that three into the four. The four has to take out the seven. It's a good looking shot when you can make it. Nice and easy and loose. The man you just saw. There he is, Robert Lawrence, 5'10", 175, and Mark Thayer. Mark's a 34-year-old. He'll be back. And there they are, on the left, Walter Hall, President, Bowling Proprietors Association, and John Lespina on the right, the Vice President will be presenting Green Champions Blazer a little bit later. Two important gentlemen in the world of bowling. Mark Thayer finally getting the ball wide in the last couple frames will be in the 170s. A good performance. Fourth place check. Finishing stronger than he was in the middle part of the game. 245 for Lawrence with a total of eight strikes. 177 for Thayer. It'll be Monticelli next. Now, Bo and Danny Weissman team up this week to highlight the key ingredients to the power shot. In the 
1970s, the sport of bowling turned to power. The most dominant player of the 70s was Mark Roth. He was the first player to come out with the big, strong ball. Six-step delivery, long push away, cocked wrist, high backswing, plants that left foot and pulls the ball through with a tremendous wrist snap. Mark did it all. And the power game is still the game of the 1990s. And with me is touring professional Danny Wiseman to tell us how the younger players are doing it. Danny? Well, Bill, I believe that uh, one of the most essential keys in today's modern game is the deep pivot step and a long slide. Right here, um, I'm holding the ball very low. All right, the ball gets to the peak of the swing on the pivot step. I'm pushing very hard. The arm swing comes down and moves through the shot. Now, I'm still moving with my slide. That enables my arm swing to be very free so I can move my hand through the ball to get the revolutions on the ball. Thank you, Danny. Take a tip from Danny Wiseman. Push the ball away, have a real long slide, a long follow-through, and continue to use the power, and you'll be successful in the 1990s. I'm not going to buy just any tire. Before you buy new tires, test these first. Bridgestone Road Handlers from Sears. Drive them anywhere for a thousand miles. If you're not convinced, Bridgestone Road Handlers are the best tires you've ever driven. Sears will replace them free. When they say it's guaranteed, it's guaranteed. Now at reduced prices, Bridgestone Road Handler, backed by Sears Lifetime Free Replacement. Who's going to back you better than Sears? When you're into sports, you're into ABC Sports. From the thrill of victory to the agony of defeat, the action's on ABC. Now for the real sports fan, Nutmeg Mills has created authentic ABC sportswear. Starring the Monday Night NFL Collection, the College Football Collection, and the Wide World of Sports Collection. Authentic ABC sportswear by Nutmeg Mills. Get into it. Real sportswear for real sports fans. Call now to feel the excitement of the perfect game. Oh, yes! Thrill to the making of a 7-10 split. Wow, the three play that, baby. And enjoy historic footage of bowling's legendary champions. ABC Sports presents an all-new home video, Bowling the Perfect Game. Available only by calling 1-800-4-ABC-VCR. Classic moments in bowling history can be yours for the incredible price of $14.98 plus $3 shipping. In our very first match, 10 strikes each professional. Mark Thayer winning 279 to 253. Thayer then went against Robert Lawrence of Austin, Texas, 245 to 177. And there you see that Lawrence now goes against the twice player of the year, Amleto Monicelli. This is the Roseland Bowl, 60 lanes, lots of seating capacity this week. And rightfully so, because this friendly era, they embraced the professional bowlers in grand fashion, Nelson, and it's heartwarming to all of us associated with the Professional Bowlers Tour. And it has been announced that the U.S. Open will be back here next year. Big field of 240, Nelson. All right, Chris, there are 240, 144 pros, 96 league players. So, we look at the top 24 that didn't make the top five. Walter Ray Williams up there, fifth place, eighth place. McDowell, the president. Peter Hakem, 11th place. Good week for him. I'll be a great champion. Okay. Bob Benoit, Pete Weber, the defending champion, 15th place. Wunderlich, three top 24s in a row. Ray Edwards, Dave Ferraro has had the hot hand this winter. Don Moser, 19th. Del Ballard Jr., former U.S. Open champion, Mark Roth, who won this tournament in 1984, 21st. Vespi, the early leader, David Ozio, the 1991 Player of the Year. And the man trying to outrun the bird, bird is Ice, 24th place, a league player, Chris. All right, there they are. Hundreds of them. Our Jack Moran estimated a crowd of 800, and that's big for any bowling establishment because there's so little room. We're in Canadagua, and next week we're in Windsor Locks. A $2,000 Tums Man on the Bubble Award will be offered to the player bumped from the Firestone Tournament of Champions Field should the winner of the Tums Classic, that's next week, not already be eligible for the Firestone and the Man on the Bubble. At this moment is Art Trask. That's next week, Windsor Locks, Connecticut. And then two weeks from today, the number 16 final on the Winter Tour, 
the Firestone Tournament of Champions in Fairlawn. Right now, it's semifinal time at the United States Open in Canadagua between Syracuse and Rochester. Little stats for the first 13 weeks of the PBA Tour. The player that starts the match, this one being Monicelli, has won 28 out of 52. That's 53%. So it's uh, a coin toss to see if you have any advantage starting. As a number two seed, Amleto is one and eight. One victory and eight losses. But he has a total of 11 titles in 10 years. He averaged more than anybody on a championship here, Monicelli, 247. But the hot hand is held by Robert Lawrence, who told me he threw an experimental shot in the 10th frame to see if he had pull area when he got that split. Crossing over and leaving the 6-10. And I guess he found out he didn't have pull area in the 10th frame and decided to do it again. But that one was by accident. As he goes high, avoids the split, leaves the 6-10, changes balls to a... Low surface friction ball slided across the lane. The danger of the chop. Of course, uh, with our head-to-head -head format, the winner of this game moves into the final against Scott Devers. The person that loses the match will get $12,000. Bob Learn Jr. earned $6,500 today, and Mark Thayer with $8,000. The grip of Robert Lawrence, much like the great, great Hank Marino, who won the National Match Game Championship, or forerunner to this, in 1938. Tight thumb hole and a lot of reverse pitch. This is the Open. The All-Star in the Open, won by names like Vera Papa, Carter, Weber, Waylu, Hardwick, Stefanich, Day, Bowman. Monticelli. Today, we'll join a league group of reaching $1 million mark on the PBA Tour in winnings, despite what he does in this match. But he'd like to get his first major. Crossing over, the man that coming in needed only $6,134 to reach that magic mark attained by seven others. Monicelli with a style we've seen so many times, very contemporary style. Look at the open hand out there. Look at his thumbs pointing straight up. And very, but look at how solid his pivot step is, pointing directly down the target line, head steady, pulls that left shoulder back, snaps the wrist, got a good break crossing over, and he is perfect through two frames. Man that was second in last year's Firestone. The Rudolph Valentino haircut of Monicelli going against the bad boy of the PBA Tour, Robert Lawrence. I hit leaving the 3-6 on the right lane for the man that shot a 2.45 with eight strikes and his win over Mark Thayer. We're seeing a quick change in the lane as you see Robert Lawrence's ball drifting high. Both of these players have gone high on 48. For championship here, 47-48. Lawrence high in the first frame, high in the third, and Monicelli getting a great break in his shot over here, crossing over. There you see the score. Lawrence trailing by 20. In match play, defeated Monticelli, 200 to 191. Chris, you said that Lawrence won 50,000 as you check his grip again. In 1989, in regional play, he won almost 92,000 combined with that singles championship and regional tournaments. The first solid tap of the day. Every time a player has hit the pocket, he has been rewarded so far today. We had a half 10 by Thayer in one of the earlier matches, but this is the first time a player hit solid in the pocket and had anything but a strike. Robert Lawrence, both his wins came in 1990, winning the True Value and also the Fairlane. Canadag Canadagua, we're going to take a break and then return. Better way to face the day. 
The morning belongs to Speed Stick. It's 110% protection against wetness and odor that lasts all day. Start the morning with Speed Stick, the wide stick, for powerful 24-hour protection. Speed Stick, 110% protection. It's a tractor value like no other. For only $9.99.99, get this Craftsman 2 12 and a half horsepower tractor with 38 inch deck. Save $250 during Sears Day. It's a spectacular value above the rest. Hot coffee and steak in front of strangers at 30,000 feet? <laughs> Not with my old adhesive. Fix it and holds stronger than any other adhesive. It even stands up to the hottest liquids. Now I fix it and forget it. What do I like about the World League? It's good, hard, pro football. Get into the World League, Sunday on ABC Sports. Yes, the leadership of all of bowling has gathered here in Canadegua. Here's the President of the American Bowling Congress, Henry Lipinski, Commissioner of the PBA, there alongside Bud Fisher. They're here watching now, Hamleta Monicelli. Three in a row. Up high, three, six, ten. Ten did not go. Went back home to Barraquisimeto, Venezuela, for a rest, and Teresa, his wife, did not uh, return because there are only two more stops. Windsor Locks, Tums Classic, next week, and the Firestone Tournament of Champions before most of the month of May can be a respite for these pros who've gone out here 16 weeks in a row and battled. Okay, Nelson. Thank you, Chris Schenkel. Tournament leader, Scott Devers. Scott, uh, the tournament leader so far in 1992 has three wins, ten losses. Uh, what do you feel is the reason the tournament leader has lost so much this year, and is there anything you can do about it today? Well, I think that it, um, I try not to look at most of the negative statistics that's out here. I'm going to go out, I'm going to bowl my game like I've bowled all week long. I'm going to try to fill as many frames as I possibly can, hopefully throw as many strikes as I can, and, and hopefully I'll be the winner. Chris, I've heard that story before, and it hasn't worked. Let's see what happens. Okay, as Amleto Monicelli slides through, just slashing through, leaving the 1-2-10, the washout. And uh, Amleto opened with three strikes and marked with a spare. His lead is 15 pins at this point. This is the semifinal game, the winner to meet Scott Devers for the 40,000 championship prize for the U.S. Open. All out, the 1989 and 1990 Player of the Year. Only his second telecast in 1992 after six last year and nine the previous year. He was second at the True Value at Landmark Lanes of Peoria. Now Lawrence. Next on Wide World of Sports, as you're watching the U.S. Open, world record long jumper Mike Powell is part of a big field for the right to go to the finals of the Jeep Superstars and Derby hopefuls. will be in Kentucky for the Bluegrass Stakes presented by Kawasaki. All next, ABC Sports. Leading up to the first Saturday in May, classic Kentucky Derby bow right here on ABC. That'll be interesting. No prohibitive favorite yet has surfaced in the Derby. Now yeah. Lawrence, fifth frame, can take the lead with a double. Going back. 245 win over Mark Thayer. Previous game. 245, 177. The big swinging hook. Lawrence with his eyes down. Best shot he threw in the match. He trailed by four going in the shot. He now leads by six. Monicelli, who has really kind of struggled. Let's see what kind of adjustment he can make to get back into the match. Both professionals. From bowling families, I'm Leto Monticelli takes time off periodically during the tour, and each time he returns, his performance is enhanced. Why? I usually take off when I feel like uh, I just got to get away from bowling, from everybody, just uh, go home, see the family, and just do something different, go to my business, and then I get ready to, 
you know, get some practice, uh, work on my ball a little bit before I come back, and uh, I'm ready to go. Trying to regain the lead with the strike up, leading the 2 4 5 and Leto, who in 1980 went to an English language institute in Mississippi, there for nine months to learn our language. Lawrence contemplating the match. He knows that right now, Monticelli's in trouble. Monticelli's got to get the ball in this zone, the 2 5 zone, take out the 4 and 8, and he only trail by six. Okay, we're in our semifinal game in the United States Open. We'll return following this. It's no secret, money's tight, and people are going out of their way to find bargains. But you don't have to drive all over town, because True Value hardware stores have savings that are just too good to miss. They call them hot buys, and you'll find them throughout the store. From Master Mechanic, Armor All, True Temper, Master Electrician, Green Thumb, and many more. But hurry, the hot buys end soon. So stop by a True Value hardware store displaying the hot buys banner today. It's hard to describe when you hold your child for the very first time. You feel that little hand, you hear that little cry, you realize you're responsible for someone else. It changes your priorities, it even changes what you drive. The 1992 Toyota Previa, along with standard driver's side airbag and optional anti-lock brakes, it's the only van to meet all passenger car, federal motor vehicle safety standards. Toyota Previa. Changes everything. The headaches, the heartaches, the frustration. The only remedy, the Tums Classic, next Saturday on ABC's Pro Bowlers Tour. <clears throat> Here's a host for the United States Open here in 1992. Proprietor of Rosen Bowl of 60 Lanes, Jack Moran. Irish smile, ah yes. Now Robert Lawrence leading by six tens of double up shooting in the seventh frame, going against Amleto Monicelli. Very close to the channel, leading a 10. <laughs> Robert Lawrence looks up to the announce booth, his good buddy Del Ballard Jr., who won last week at the Toyota Classic in Sayville, knowing he threw that ball way too wide, gets a great break, leaving the wall shot 10, needs a spare to maintain his lead. Trouble, the ball went in the channel. Once it leaves the playing surface, it is dead. That does not count, it's a miss. And right now, Robert Lawrence, a little nonchalant as you see the ball sliding by, has given Monicelli a great boost as Lawrence drops to three to seven pins in arrears after seven frames. is right back. Monicelli, excellent training habits, runs almost every day. He's a vegetarian, has given up meat for the last 11 years. He feels that that keeps him nice and healthy for all the traveling he has on the, on the road. I guess the jury's a little bit out on that, but right now he leads the match. What has happened? We saw the first two games, high-scoring environment. Once again, I, I repeat that the PBA, as you see Monicelli cutting it loose and cutting right through the middle, the PBA stripped or cleaned the last 15 feet of the lane. The lanes look great. Now it looks like we're having some of that carry down or oil problem. The scoring environment has toughened here in the semifinal. Monicelli with 11 titles. Lawrence with two. It's power and speed tomorrow right here on ABC Sports. That's right. First, the World League regional action is the New York, New Jersey Knights take on their rivals, the division-leading Orlando Thunder, or on ABC, traveling to Ohio to Montreal to battle a machine. Then the Indy cars will speed through the streets at the Toyota Grand Prix. Long Beach, live. A 10. 
When the oil carries down the lane, you can see it at home even, that the ball does not as hook as much. The ball sliding a little as it enters the pocket. Taps start to appear. The scoring environment drops. And right now for Monicelli, with the conversion, he would trail by seven pins through nine frames. The jury is still out on this match. Robert Lawrence, as he comes up in the ninth frame, going at a 196 pace. That means if he spares strikes, spare the rest of the way, 196 would be his game. Monicelli, a possible 199. This is a big shot right here. Robert Lawrence. And a 310. Starting to get ugly. From 270s, we're going to 170s. The ball cuts through the middle. The 310 baby split, Chris. Pretty easy spare for the mm -hmm. pros. They should make this about 50% of the time if they want to win money out here on the Pro Bowlers Tour. Get the ball to the right of the three pin. Let the ball carry into the 10. He needs this to maintain his lead through nine frames. He was at the line begging for that shot. Well, Lawrence in his interview said that he has been getting beaten up out here on the professional bowlers tour in the match play segments. Well, right now he's down to the key match play segment, and he determines his own position right now. If he throws two strikes, he shuts out Monicelli. Anything less, Monicelli can throw strikes in the tenth and win the match. Here's a man that must win today or next week to re-qualify for the Firestone. Right now, for Lawrence, strike, four pins, Lock City. He goes into the championship match against Devers. Anything less, this man, Monicelli, still has a chance. that opens the door for Monicelli. What faces Monicelli, if indeed Lawrence converts the spare, he would finish with 196. Monicelli would need two strikes and eight pins. And Amleto choosing to finish on that lane bow. That was his choice, you're right, Chris. He has the choice as a higher finisher in the tournament to finish the match. This has been his choice, now he must perform. Two strikes, anything less and he loses. And now, Monicelli with the 310. Lawrence had it earlier. And in Spanish, it's adios for Senor Monicelli because he needed two strikes to win the match. He will not win. The final is going to be Robert Lawrence against the lefty Scott Devers for the U.S. Open title, three-year exemption to the Firestone Tournament of Champions. But nevertheless, I'm Lota Molicelli, became a millionaire today. He has a total of $105,266, a million one. ABC Sports presentation, the Professional Bowlers Tour will return after this message and a word from our ABC station. You rode the same rides, ate the same junk, got the same heartburn. But his antacid's different from yours. His Tums has calcium. Most antacids don't. Regular Rolex uses an aluminum salt. This uses aluminum and magnesium. So does this. Of all these, only Tums helps wipe out heartburn and gives you calcium you need every day. Something my body needs anyway. I like that. Calcium-rich Tums. U.S. Olympic athletes, all told, they put in millions of training miles. It's the same idea behind our Firestone Firehawk Endurance Championship Series. 
The Firestone performance tires we've raced have run up more than a million and a half miles. And everything we learn goes into every Firestone performance tire we make. Is it worth it? We think so. Monday, no one does the news like William Hurt, Holly Hunter, Albert Brooks, and Jack Nicholson. A network television premiere, broadcast news at a special time, Monday. Strike it rich in Rochester, New York at the Lilac City Tournament. Bowl for over $950,000 in cash prizes. Enter the high-paying men's team event. The women's team event. And, and the, the mixed team, team event. Win with the Lilac. There's a men's doubles. Women's doubles and, and mixed doubles, doubles event. event. It's the world's fastest growing tournament. And we plan to pay over $950,000. Call 1-800-36-LILAC. Win with the Lilac. <laughs> Honey, I got a new tractor. Obsolescence. Honey, I got a new tractor. It's the fact of life that says nothing lives forever. Honey, I got a new tractor. tractor. At Cub Cadet, we put a lot of time into our products. Honey, I got a new tractor. So you'll get a lot of time out of them. Honey! You can accept obsolescence. Honey? Or you can fight it. You've got a Cub Cadet. Working over time. Jam to America's new country, tonight on WHDF. Well, I'm Jim McKay reporting from Keeneland Racecourse in Lexington, Kentucky. We're going to be going back to bowling in just a minute, but coming up next on ABC's Wide World of Sports, we'll have the all-star preliminary of the Jeep Superstars. Among the competitors, long jump world record holder Mike Powell. We're also going to be here right at Keeneland for the Bluegrass Stakes presented by Kawasaki. Dance floor, owned by rap star Hammer, takes on 10 promising three-year-olds in a final test three weeks before the Kentucky Derby. We're also going to update you on Arazi's impressive three-year-old debut this week in France. Arazi, you know, dazzled the racing world in last fall's Breeders' Cup, and he's the favorite for the Kentucky Derby. A couple of news items in case you haven't heard, the NHL strike is over and there will be Stanley Cup hockey playoffs. Also, just today, Midori Ito of Japan has retired from figure skating, saying very simply that she wants to do other things. So, be with us at 4.30 Eastern Time for ABC's Wide World of Sports. Now, let's go back to Chris Schenkel and the final match. Okay, here in the United States Open, Mark Thayer with 10 strikes. Matched by Learns 10, 279 to 253. Then Lawrence steps in and defeats Thayer, 245, 177, with eight strikes. Lawrence defeats Monicelli with seven strikes, 196 to 184, which leads us to the championship match, 40,000 to the winner. Scott Deaver will be in there. Yes, a lot of strikes today on our telecast, Bo, and our director, Larry Cam, came up visually to show you how it all happens, and Bo did the commentary on it. So let's take a look at the anatomy of a bowling strike. The goal of every first shot in the sport of bowling is to strike. There are various ways to achieve this. However, there is one recognized method that gives a player the highest percentage. Even in slow motion, it is difficult to see the exact action of each pin once the ball has impacted the head pin. So let's take a closer look at the dynamics of the ideal strike. You'll notice that the ball only hits four pins, the one, three, five, and nine. Now let's add the two pin to the rack. The number one pin will do the job here. Now the four and six pins. The key pin is the two on the four, the three on the six. Now in the back row, the eight pin. The five pin in the center of the rack takes out the eight. And finally, the two toughest pins to knock down in bowling, the seven and ten pins. The domino effect of the two, four, and seven, and the three, six, ten will give you a strike. So when your friends say, nice shot, you knock down all ten pins with the ball, say, thank you, but that's not necessarily true. I only knocked down four pins. However, I will take credit for a strike. Okay, well done, guys. 
Now into the championship match. 40 to the winner, 22 to the runner-up. Neither with a major under their professional bowling belt. Robert Lawrence with a victory over him. Let him on a celli. Should fortify him now going against the left-hander, Scott Devers. Lawrence with two victories today, now in the title match. Watching the anatomy of a strike. Now it happens. Exactly right. He only hit four pins with the ball. The remaining pins did the work. Now Scott Devers, the only lefty in the top five. Our tournament leader was steady all week long. He has four championships. To his credit, Tucson, Austin, El Paso, and in the city of Rochester, New York. Not too far from Canadagua, where... We're watching the United States Open Championship. His last win, Scott Devers, was in El Paso in 1990. What scoring environment is going to show up in the championship game as you look at Devers' full grip? 266 was in the fir average the first game, then it dropped to 211 in the second game, and then 190 for the two players in the semifinal. What's going to happen here? Well, he jumps out there quickly. The left-hander from... Richmond, Indiana, born in Centerville, a little town nearby. Now the bad boy of the PBA Tour. He likes that nickname. He's really a nice guy. Needs to throw a strike to keep this match even. The gunslinger, huh? You bet. Good match game player. So smooth. And tied. Well, he made a real good move here. He moved farther out on the lane. Well, I mean that. He's sending the ball almost out to the edge board to get around all the oil carry down. He's in a nice, smooth area. He's got a different shot than he played in the previous game. And, Chris, he could be very, very tough in this match, although both players are even through two. Didn't seem like he expected a strike out of that. So, as you see, Scott Devers working on that, those fingers that have taken a beating through seven days of bowling to get to the number one position. He knows from the reaction of the crowd that Lawrence's string has stopped. Okay, the man who had six in a row in his first game here this afternoon now has a double and a spare. Devers leads by one, can increase it to 11. Shooting in the third frame of the title game to the U.S. Open title. Seven pin. The Hoosier with kind of a serpentine arm swing. He pushes it away along the target line, takes it outside, but here's the key part. He took it out here, he rewraps it, then he sends it right back through the target line. Without that realignment, Devers would be a league player with a 180 average. Leaves the seven pin, needs this to stay even. On our telecast this year, the top seed, which Scott Devers is this week, top seed has won three of the 13 Telecast. His fiancée, Jacqueline Laforette. There she is. Her fiancé, very wise, he built a house prior to marriage in Richmond, Indiana. Lovely state to live in, partner. Matches even through three frames. Championship. Jacqueline likes it. We hope you do, too. Championship match don't go away. A lot more to come as we're all even. Shine a light on you. Shine a light on me. Keep your foot light shining for everyone to see. A touch clean through your thirst never leaves you flat. Out shining all the others at for Bud Light. If you're into looking good, get into Bud Light. A clean, fresh taste won't fill you up. 
never lets you down. And you can taste it, you can feel it, you know you got it right. Everything else is just a lie. Keep your butt light shining. Everything else is just a lie. It's one of the most technologically advanced, most rigorously tested fluids on Earth. Relentlessly measured for maximum protection against the friction, the wear and tear, the heat and stress of today's engines. It is today's Quaker State. In Europe, in Japan, in America, Quaker State quality has passed the most demanding tests automakers can throw at it. At Quaker State, we don't just say we're tough, we're tested tough. The big Q is one tough motor oil. Again, more leaders in bowling. Commissioner of the Professional Bowlers Association in from Akron, Ohio, Mike Connor. Robert Lawrence, Austin, Texas. Two victories coming into the championship against the tournament leader, Scott Beavers. Watch the action of, of Robert Lawrence. He's cut down his hook a little bit. He's over the third arrow, but he's not playing the real wide shot with the big snap. He's just rolling it right on in. The ball's cutting through. The match is even through four. U.S. Open Championship, three-year exemption in the Firestone and a lifetime exemption into this tournament wherever it may go. pin and that means Bo that you and our scorer today winner last week Del Ballard can bow wherever it is whenever you want to hopefully we will I had a good time this week I averaged 210 and didn't even get a smell the lane condition was absolutely ideal most all week long the players bowling the best are rowing for the title smooth light Robert Lawrence covers the 10 pin now it is Scott Beavers Three and one as a top seed. He has four titles, as we told you. You see seven rounds up there. Those are all eight game rounds, 56 games, seven days. Devers can take the lead with a strike here. What a match for the title. Scott Devers has a very unusual training regimen. Just listen. Yeah, a couple of years ago, I built a new house, and I decided to put a shortened lane in my basement. Uh, when you're out on tour week after week, you get a little tired of looking at bowling centers, and I enjoy being at home, so when I decide to practice, I just go downstairs, I throw a few shots, work on my practice, my timing, and it seems to work for me. Short lane, about a 17-foot approach, and a 30-foot lane. And actually, a pro doesn't have to practice on a full lane, Chris. He's already developed his game. He doesn't really need to shoot at pins, and he just needs the, the perspective of the arrows. Now, all he needs to do is get the ball over here in the 6'10 zone and go for two of them. It'd be foolish with a double up to try to kick out the four pin. Very smart move. Take your split, take nine out, and work on the rest of the game. That's what he's doing. Wise move by 30-year-old Scott Deaver. We mentioned the amateurs are league players in this tournament. In the last four years, the amateurs have averaged 19 pins less than the pros, the 144 pros, up till this year. They closed that gap down to just 10 pins, Chris. So interesting and a good week for the league players against the pros. Leaving a four pin on the right lane. with this spare would have a nice four pin lead. So with the win here today, as you saw, Robert Lawrence would re-qualify for the Firestone. All right, what do you do when you've never won a major? You need to qualify for the Firestone, 40,000 bucks at stake. You know what the best training regimen is? Is just keep your eyes on your target. Think about your form. Maintain that form. This man's probably bowled 30,000 games in his life, and these next four frames are the most important. So concentrate. Think about the form, not the score. 19 and 5 in 24 games of match play. Robert Lawrence.
or rather, yes, Robert Lawrence, who was 16 and 8. It was Scott Devers, who was 19 and 5. Marshall Holman, PEBA all time money winner, million five, followed by Roth. Then, today, number eight, Leto Monicelli, a million five, two, six, six. Oh. Well, Devers had a chance to really take hold of this match coming up there in the sixth frame when he had two strikes working, a 10-pin lead, could have made it 20. He opened in the sixth, now gets the solid seven in the seventh. This conversion, he would be four pins down. If you just joined us, the uh, defending champion, Pete Weber, winning last year in Indianapolis, finished 15th here. Players often talk about their own game, and Scott Devers, by his own volition, described his style as ugly, but there's that old saying, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And I think a lot of the young players come out here on the tour, and they don't have success right away, and they start fiddling with their games. Uh, good move by Devers to stay with his natural game. Now, Devers, with a little drift in his approach, will start here, drift this way, and actually throw the ball almost straight down the second arrow. And a 6-10. We're in Canadagua between Syracuse and Rochester. We're glad our sports director at Channel 9 in Syracuse, Doug Logan, checked in to say hello. They carry our show and have a lot of viewers in the Syracuse area. You're right, Chris. And here's the one of the best spare shooters in all of bowling. In the TPC Tournament Players Championship last year, in 48 games, only missed one spare. Robert Lawrence, who is up and ready to go, leads by six pins. He has a strike up, shooting now in the eighth frame. It's getting late for the U.S. Open Championship. Not often you can stand on the approach and have the U.S. Open Championship, Chris, in the bottom of your hand if you can throw some strikes. That luxury is Robert Lawrence's right here. that one well he goes from happy to sad in one second he was he was wide here he thought it was a good shot then he thinks it's going to be a 2-7 split and he's hoping it strikes again conversion here he will maintain his lead We come down the home stretch. Lawrence going at a 208 pace. Devers 202. U.S. Open at stake. Two frames left. And in the first game, Mark Thayer defeated Bob Learn Jr. 279 to 253. Lawrence over Thayer 245 to 177. Then Lawrence over Monticelli 196 to 184. Now the fourth game as Superstars follows. Jeep Superstars and live bluegrass stakes. What you build for in a professional career. It's up to Devers to answer the message given to him by Robert Lawrence. It's going to take strikes to win this one. Ninth frame. It was different, but it counts. And a sedated reaction by the crowd is they didn't quite see it from the outside angles. The Devers went right through the middle, pushing the 4, 6, 7, 10 backwards. What a terrific break here in the ninth. He cannot shut out Robert Lawrence Jr., but he can retake the lead with a strike here in the 10th. 56 games during the week for Lawrence. It's been 59. This is the 57th for Devers. It all comes down to one frame right here. You remember at the breakfast uh, meeting before last year's Firestone, they asked Scott Devers about his shot. He said, it's ugly, but it works. 
You're right, and it worked to perfection right here in the 10th frame. He has retaken the lead. He leads by four, can extend that lead to 14 with one additional strike here in the 10th frame, but he cannot shut out Lawrence. No matter what happens, Lawrence has a chance to determine his own destiny. There's Lawrence. Deaver's fourth in last year's major Firestone. Well, Deavers has performed like a champion out here. He has won other titles. This is his first chance at a major. He has used only one bowling ball all week. We talk about players changing balls, changing balls. Deavers has used this red ball all week long, made the adjustments with his speed, and now he's done what he's had to do here in the championship game. It'll all be up to Robert Lawrence. Twenty-one for this man, Scott Devers of Richmond, Indiana. Right now, Robert Lawrence needs a strike two times in the tenth frame and a four count. Anything less than a strike on this ball, he cannot win. Open, one of the three majors, along with the PBA National and the Firestone, which will be contested again two weeks from today. Very composed strike in the clutch by Lawrence, but this is the one that counts. The four pins, they're automatic. This is the one that will allow him to be either the 1992 U.S. Open champion or the runner-up. Must strike. over. Chris, he's going to make that strike count because he's going to get four or more pins and be the U.S. Open champion. I have to say, in the 18 years you and I have sat up here doing the majors, that is the best break I've ever seen in a crucial position in a major tournament. That's a winner right there. And so tough for Scott Davis. Third title. My, oh my. Standing for both bowlers, I would think, but mainly the U.S. Open champion, 226 to 221. John Jowdy, congratulates his pupil, Robert Lawrence. Okay, 40,000 to Lawrence, 22 to a disappointed Scott Devers. What a finish for Scott, but he was short by five. We'll be back. Simple arithmetic can tell you a lot about Toyota trucks. Like right now, extra value options can add up to big savings for you. On this, or this. But hurry before your dealer is minus the one you want. Every seat on every plane to everywhere we fly in the U.S. now has a new fare, with savings up to 50%. United Airlines announces fare fares. For business travelers, first-class flyers, and vacationers, too. Now everyone who flies will find dramatic savings and... The water no longer flows from the lungs. Remember, you can't get air into the lungs until you get the water out. 